Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here and in this video we're going to be doing more Apex practice. So we're going to be looking at problem number 20 from the Apex Sandbox. If you've never heard of Apex Sandbox before, it is an amazing place for you to go and practice actually writing and doing code. So in this question, we are going to be making sure that our values are in ascending order. If you haven't given this a try yourself yet, go ahead and pause this video. I will be here. Pause it and give it a try yourself first. Even if you can't get through it, it is still a learning opportunity for you to get some hands on Apex. So go ahead and pause and give this a try. So let's take a look at the prompt here. Given three integers, A, B, and C, return true if they are in ascending order. For our purposes, two equal numbers will be considered in ascending order. So what that means is, you know, we're looking for things to um, move upwards. So if we remember what ascending order is, if we have a, a scale like this, and it's one, two, three, so we're, we're basically counting upwards, right? So we're going in an, an upward direction, and even if we skip 10, you know, 25, all of this is still in ascending order. And on top of that, if we have two of the same number, so one, one, three, seven, seven, ten, uh, these are also in ascending order. So the same values are seen as in ascending order. So there's no need to like say, you know, we're, we're, there's no uniqueness involved with this one. So taking a look at what we can actually get passed in for this example, we have three parameters that can get passed in for our A, B, and C integers. And when we want to think of writing this algorithm, we kind of want to Maybe think of it logically, right? So when we have values, let's say 10, 10, and 15, when we look at these values, how do we know if they're in the right order? Well, if you if you think of it naturally, right, we're gonna we're gonna start from the beginning and we're gonna say, hey, is 10 less than the next number in the row? Because it, when we're doing ascending order, it's lowest to the highest. So is this number less than the next number order? If it is, then we are in ascending order. And then we want to check the next, we want to move to the next one. Uh, so then we'll check, hey, is our B in this case, or our middle one, is that in ascending order as well? And in this instance, yes, it is. We are in ascending order. So it works out very well. Now let's take a look at the uh, next example here. We've got 15, 14, and 13. So we'll start at the beginning again and we'll check, hey, is this less than the, the next number over? And if it's not, we don't even need to check the next one, at least for this prompt, right? We don't even need to check this because we already know that this is not not equal to, or it's not less than the value that we are, are looking for. So let's actually jump into writing the code for this. The first thing we want to do is write an if statement. So we're going to say if a is less than b, the next number over, uh, then we want to do something, right? We want to either continue down our list because since we have three parameters, we need to continue. We could, you know, normally just end here and just say, um, if this is true, we want to return true because this one works out. If this is false, then we want to return, return false, right? So we want to say, if, if A is less than B, we're doing great. Let's, let's, we're gonna return true for now, but we actually need to continue on because we have more values. But let's run this for right now and see, see what happens. So our first one passes because the first set is in the correct order. Uh, we're, we're getting an error here for 12 and 12. So let's, we're gonna need to take a look at that. And then we are also getting one for two and two and um, this one, we are returning false for 15. So it's like kind of working, kind of not. So let's take a look at these two and twos really quickly. Um, or the, the numbers that are, that are the same number. And what we want to do is say less than or equal to, because we want to continue to check, Hey, um, is this value, if they're the same value, like this example in here, if they're the same value, then we want to continue to move on. So it looks like we're getting more passes, 
But when we move down to, hey, is this, or so we've checked the first one, great. Um, and right now we're stopping at the first one, but we need to also check the second set. So instead of just returning true in here, we also need to say if B is less than or equal to C, because we are now checking the next number. And instead of going in here, we are also doing a return false in here. So we're checking the first number. Great. If that's less than or equal to, uh, then we're, we're doing good. But we also need to make sure that the second number uh, also yields the correct value. And there we have it. We have our nice confetti coming through um, with our correct values here. But as we take a look at this, this is very cumbersome, right? Like it, it, this is kind of hard to read. And what we want to do is now simplify this. So to do that simplification, we can actually using our arithmetic expressions, just combine these two together and just return our false if all of these are, are equal, if this entire expression is equal, because we're doing both of our checks in there. If you have multiple if statements stacked like that, um, you can combine them all together using um, the, the expression operators to, to bring all of that logic together in one. So let's run this. We've got our confetti again. We have passed this completely. So this also works, right? We've we've now simplified this down and it is working uh, pretty well. But of course, this wouldn't be me and Apex Sandbox without kind of like pushing the limits of, of this a little bit, a little bit more. So when we think about it and we've seen it in other videos, so definitely check those out. This entire expression yields true or false like th this expression is a is a boolean expression so it, it yields true or false and we've seen this before whenever we're just returning true or returning false we can simplify this down by just returning the expression itself because this will either yield true or false it can't be anything else because we're using these these operators to do a comparison of those values so let's let's move this out and let's run this and see if we've got it right again so there we go got our confetti this has also passed and this is in my opinion the simplest way to uh, get this done and this is what i would stick with but Pushing it a little bit further, there are certain things and tools that we can use in uh, Salesforce to help uh, make this be able to be used by um, multiple parameters and a lot of other things. Because what if we wanted to add like a, a C on here, or sorry, a D on here. So integer, oh, I can actually type in here. If we wanted to add a, an integer D or the, the, the values were infinite, right? So this logic, is pretty static and it will not work for for that sort of occasion so you can build some functions do the calculations and a for loop and all that stuff but um, a few of the folks in the slack the uh, salesforce mentor slack they came up with a pretty slick idea of using lists and comparing lists and using some of the out of the box apex uh, functionality for sorting now is this the most efficient way i have no idea i can probably test it if i actually you know wanted to uh, go down that route, but um, just giving you some other options and some other ideas uh, for, for things. So we have created an integer list and normally, you know, you would come in here and do like integer list add and we'll do a, b and c. Right, so we're, we're adding the values in here. And then we need something to compare it to because what we want to do is we're going to take these lists and kind of compare them. So we're going to have a list of integers and we're going to call this sort list. So this list we're going to sort. And just to show you a quick trick, you can actually add things in the initialization this way. So for this list, we're adding A, A, B, and C this way. In this list, in the initialization, we're actually adding A, B, and C, which is kind of cool. Then for our sorted list, we want to sort it. So what the heck is sort? We're going to do uh, Apex list uh, soap or yeah. 
Here we go. We've got the list class and the sort is a method inside of the list class. So here we go, all the methods and we can see sort. So what does sort do? Sorts, sorts items in, in the list in ascending order, which is exactly what we want. So if we call sort, what we're going to see is that there's no return value. So it's actually changing. It's actually changing this list for us. It's changing it automatically. Now, what we want to do is a comparison. So we want to say if sort list, is it sort or sorted list? Sort list not equals our original list. Then we want to return true else we want to return false so once again throwing something kind of weird at what is equals right where do where did we see that equals uh let's jump all the way back to our method list and we have equals so equals compares zoom in a little bit compares this list with a specific list and returns true or false if both of the lists are equal. So if they have the same value inside of them, we can see some examples down here. They use it all over the place in this one, but basically we are um, comparing the two separate lists and seeing if they are equal to each other. So this works out perfect. So the sorted list should be in ascending order. The original list is in the original order but these values are going to shift around for the sorted list and let's run this to see what happens perfect we have got our confetti coming through we have sorted our list the only thing that i would change on this is just returning returning this value because we've seen that whenever we see this pattern we know we can just return the values um straight up like this example so if we run this one more time we get our confetti we have sorted our list or we've sorted our values using lists and doing it manually using if statements. There are a bunch of other ways to do this also using for loops because technically this sort, it's just a function that is running in the background. Maybe I'll do some, some videos on some of these uh, uh, functions, these out of the box functions that exist. But regardless, that is it for this specific question. Um, this is a really fun one, gets you moving all over the place um, with, with different values that you can use and different methods that you can use and ways of doing it. Um, definitely, if you're struggling with these, check out my course on Apex Fundamentals. We go over a lot of these things like for loops, if statements, and doing these equal operations and stuff like that. Definitely check out Apex Sandbox. You need to be doing these hands-on and then coming and checking out how other people do it, like how I do. Um, and then also make sure to like and subscribe if these videos are helpful and if you want to see more. Leave a comment down below if you created this in a different way. Like I would love to hear about it, see it, and thank you all so much for watching. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.